All right, we back with another episode of uh, The Spotlight. We got Reggie right here, man. A great guest. Uh, had to get him on the show. Uh, show him some love, man. Get his uh his story out and uh talk to him about some stuff, man. But first, I always ask uh my guests uh to let us know anything new going on, like what's going on in your life uh, that you want the people to know, stuff like that, just to give yourself a spotlight. Um. Uh... Me personally, things I got going on right now, I'm start pick back up on my streaming. Yeah. Streaming games and stuff. Pick that back up. So subscribe to YouTube. What's the uh, YouTube name? Rich Homie Gaming. That's what it is. So make sure y'all subscribe. I'll be, probably be streaming. I'm gonna try and push for maybe like three or four nights a week. So tap in with that. Um uh, Finna start up my uh, fitness page on probably TikTok, Twitter, maybe. But other than that, just been chilling for the most part. Right, that's what's up. Uh, like you said, the um, the streaming. So like on Twitch. Yeah, probably yeah, Twitch and YouTube. Yeah, that stuff been blowing up lately. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody be uh on there watching the uh Kai and all them. Yeah. But I feel like uh you can really blow up on that. But it, it just take like long as you stay locked into that. Yeah, for sure. You know, you can blow up for sure. And there's a lot of money in it. Um and you the workout page on TikTok. Yeah. Um, so what you basically gonna be doing, like at home workouts for people yeah, and stuff like I'll that? I'll be probably doing probably making like videos of like certain lifts that people can do. Yeah. That aren't too strenuous, mm -hmm. but still give a good workout, good burn. So yeah. you can still, you know, feel like they did something well in the in the gym. What's your uh TikTok page name? You wanna shout it out? Uh, that one is Rich Homie Reg. Rich Homie that Reg. One for sure. It's Rich Homie Reg. I might change the name when I start the fitness page, but as of right now, it's Rich Homie Reg. Okay. All right, bet, man. So we here at uh, Finley. Uh, you coming back to play football next year, right? Yes, for sure. Uh, is this your last year or? Uh, it will be, yes. Your last year. Yeah. How you feel about how you feel about going into it? You feel good about it or like? Um, I feel really good. I feel good personally because uh, – the stuff that I was going through was tough to jump back into a season yeah. right off of a, a diagnosis back in the spring. Mm -hmm. But taking that time to myself to heal my body, uh, get myself right weight-wise, focus on the fundamentals of, you know, what I got to do to be the best me. Yeah, uh, I think doing that and taking that time to myself has helped out a lot. And I feel very excited to go into the season this year. Yeah, that's what's up. Okay, I can't wait for real. I'm ready. I'm ready to start that now for real. Um, but like you said, you were diagnosed with something last year. If you don't mind speaking on it, uh, could you go in, uh, into detail about uh, what happened? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I believe it was May second. Yeah, May second, I believe, was the day I got diagnosed with uh, chronic myeloid leukemia. And um, it really turned my world upside down at the beginning of it. And I feel as if the way I took it internally when it first started to show, when I first got the diagnosis, was I think I handled it well personally because I, I knew inside that I wasn't going to let it control me. I wasn't going to let it beat me. I wasn't going to let it you know, take its course and me be the passenger yeah. on that journey. Um, so I knew personally that I was going to be able to handle it and do what I'm supposed to, to stay healthy. But I feel like the part that kind of hurt me the most when it first started was how it affected other people. Right. Seeing how it affected my family, my friends, my looking even at my professors, seeing how, their demeanor, in a sense, changed from uh, oh, it's Reggie to is Reggie okay? Yeah. And I feel like them having to worry that much is kind of what weighed on me the most. Okay. That's crazy. Like, cause like I remember, uh, I, we both found out at the same time. Uh, it was during a summer workout. Um, it was, and you were, you were tired and, um, uh, Marcus and I started doing extra runs with you, but yep. we didn't know, we thought, you know, people come in they just be tired at first and they just got to get through it. So we didn't know. And, uh, 
But our uh, reaction was to that before we even knew, we was like, oh, they get extra runs in. Now we got to get extra runs. But then uh, then we were told the reason why you guys were doing extra runs, why you had to finish. And I'm like, what? I didn't believe it because I'm like, ain't no way because me personally, I don't know how I would have handled it. Like you didn't, you didn't show no type of, like you were down. You just was the same Reggie. You still was upbeat, uh, hype, the same person you was. So you never would have guessed that you something was going on inside like that. And because a lot of people will break down off of that. And I don't even know if I'd be strong enough to like stay myself because that that is a crazy thing to find out. And it's like, it's heartbreaking for real. Mm. But then that you, like, that you say, like, the hardest part was how other people reacted to it. That That's, that's really, that's amazing to me because that's just, that's on another level for real. Being able to stay, you like, because you didn't change at all out in the season. The only thing that you changed was like physical where you couldn't do as much as you wanted to do. But that's the only thing that I seen that changed. Which was, I feel like that's why you you would beat it, and how why you why it's don't it don't even stand a chance because of the way you you going about it. Because I feel like a lot of people lose that uh, battle a little bit because like the doubt they have. Because mm -hmm. like I, I heard from somewhere that if, if if you go about it as in I'm going to beat this, if you got the mindset, your brain and your brain like you can actually beat it. But it's just like. Of course, that's not the case in every situation. Of course, some people, it's too bad to where it's gonna defeat you. But I just, I just like the way you handled it for real, man. Like that's that's inspirational. Like, and you see how we had the four reds on the helmets. Mm -hmm. um, they had you. Uh, did you? We did an interview with the school and stuff like that. Did that like, um, like the, doing the interview and stuff? Did that like spreading your the awareness for it? What is? Was it like? Were you were you happy to do it or was it kind kind of forced? Like, what do you think? Uh, me, for me, I felt that it was good that I did the interview. I felt like it was good for me to put myself out there, let people know my story, to motivate them to see that no matter what goes on in life, you can still beat any obstacle that comes your way. Right. And if you just put your mind to it, have that mindset that. I'm not going to let exterior factors affect my internal motivation. Right. So I'm not going to let a disease, I'm not going to let other people's thoughts, just other external things affect how I view myself. Right. And if I view myself as the strongest person when I walk in the room, that's how I'm going to hold myself. Right. And so, yeah, it was, I wouldn't say it was easy for me to, be able to look past the diagnosis. Yeah. But I want to say that it was an easier flow into yeah. being able to handle it well. Because you like, like you a uh, athlete, a great athlete, actually, like, explosive. You play D-line, but you like you say, you play a uh, receiver in mm -hmm. high school, yep. some receiver, probably so a lot of other positions too. Um, so you would never even guess like, boom, I'm a, had a, like you were all American preseason all American like what is it, a year and a half ago mm -hmm. and stuff like that didn't find that out and still been able to just keep going forward and now you're gonna be able to go crazy this year hopefully you get that all American and uh, we win a lot but that's that's the plan but like like I was talking about athlete uh, athleticism uh, your sister also uh, plays basketball mm -hmm. uh, where she play at uh, University of Minnesota Minnesota she uh, what grade she in she's a sophomore this year sophomore she turning up. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's what's up. She's doing her thing. And your there. parents play basketball as well. Mm -hmm. My dad played at <clears throat> Delta State, and then my mom played at Kansas. At Kansas, yeah. oh, that ain't bad. Kansas is. Yeah, is Delta State a HBCU or I'm tripping? I'm actually not sure. It just sounded like one. I don't. I don't think it was. Okay, okay. So what? Uh, I know you're good at football, and I also seen you play basketball as well. So you're good at both. What made you decide? All right. Everybody in my family plays basketball, but I'm gonna choose football. Um, I would say it was probably my oldest brother, Richard, for sure. Um, because when he would play uh, pee wee football, I would we I would go to his games and stuff and watch him and seeing how he would go out there and make plays and he was just having fun. I really felt like 
that was what I wanted to do. And I felt like that was where I was going to find my passion. Right. And actually playing throughout Pee Wee, I did find that passion. Like as a kid, I don't think anybody could block me. Right. I'm not trying to toot my own horn yeah. or anything like that, but it was just the way that I played when I was little, that love I had for the game and how fun it was what is what like drove me to continue to perfect my craft and get better right. and better and better until I truly felt like no one can stop me. Right. And I currently feel as if no one can stop me, but that next step is me showing people right. that nobody can block me. Right. Nobody can stop me. You, No matter what you do, no matter what scheme you run, if I'm on the field, it's not going to work. Right. And that's how I, that's how I, that's how I've held myself since Pee Wee football all the way up to this day. Right. That's a great uh, mentality to have for real. Because you like, if you go into a situation with doubt, like, ah, he's bigger than me or he's this and this and that, you already lost. You feel me? You lost before you even started. But like, yeah, that is a, that's a great mindset to have. And so speaking of you picking football, so was your parents uh, fully supportive of that or did they, was they trying to get you to play basketball? Because it's like, because I've honestly, basketball is more safe because mm -hmm. football is really, da it's a dangerous sport, uh, no matter how you look at it. Um, so was your parents trying to uh, just support the football decision or was they trying to get you to play basketball? Um, I think they were more along the lines letting us play any sport. Yeah. And then whatever we, whatever we love, that's what they would have us focus on. Okay. Okay. That's how I plan on doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like that's the best way. Because if you force something, because a lot of people are in uh, their relationships with their parents be through the sport, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's like their parents are living their they dreams, dreams through their through kids. Their yeah, kids, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But that, like, I just don't, I, I don't wish that on nobody, no, no kid or anything, because that can't mess up the actual relationship you have with your parents as a father, son, or uh, father, daughter, or any daughter's mom, whatever, like the whole concept. But it's just that uh, it's, that's good that they supported you in that way. Um, do they come to a lot of games? Yeah, for sure. Any uh, relative, well, any game is like really far. Yeah. It's right. probably slow, but most of the games, all the home games, they're at. Um, any game that we have that's in Michigan, yeah. they'll go to. And they they support whatever they can. They fly out to Minnesota and yeah. go see Rose all the time. Right. And they would go see Richard play, Randall, April, Ashley. They would watch everybody. And another thing is I feel like they're – they never wanted to live their dream through us. Right. I feel like their dream was just our success. Okay. That's what they dreamed of. They dreamed of all their kids having success within their own right. Right. Within whatever field, whatever sport, whatever they wanted to do, they wanted to see their kids succeed. Yeah. And that expectation was held over all of us. We had the same we had the same standard as kids. Yeah. We strive to be the best to make sure that team Misha was the best team yeah. out there. I asked uh, asked you a great way to like that's a great family like what i want to say uh model or I, I that might not have been the right word but that is like knowing like not having to be forced to do something to uh or like be told like oh we have to do this so that the family looks like that y'all just it seemed like y'all just going to get it because you want to want your family to be looked at as you feel me successful um, and you says uh, Randall, Ashley, and April. April, uh, they all they all older. Yeah, no, Ashley is younger. Ashley and Rose are my younger sisters. Okay, but April, Richard, and Randall are my older siblings. Uh, and they all play sports. Yeah, Randall. Randall was probably the better mm, football wise. I'm probably the best in the family. Just putting that out there. But he was greatest basketball player I've had the chance to hoop with. He he was doing things on the court that. You know, yeah. people just couldn't do. Right. Like he was jumping out the gym. Same thing my dad. To this day, he still plays. Right. He still plays. He's one of the smartest sports people I've ever like been around. Right. His IQ 
And it's not even just for basketball. His IQ in sports in general, if he watches it, he knows so much about it. Mm. So, and then Ashley, she ran track. She still runs track. She, she was all American in track when she was at her JUCO, uh, Iowa Central. And uh, she, she was doing her thing out there. She's one of the best track stars and April two two of the best track stars I've ever like met. That's an athletic family right there. So yeah, like you said, your parents um let you choose uh what you wanted to do and all her all your siblings what they want to do would just let y'all go with it. Uh and that's how you plan on doing your kids as well. Yeah, for sure. Before I really get into the all right, now that we have this set, now we can start to perfect our craft. Right. Uh, I want them to choose something that they would love to do. Right. Because if you don't love what you do, you're not going to put maximum effort into it. Right. And I want them to, no matter what it is, put maximum effort in anything they do. Right. Because if you don't put maximum effort, then what's the purpose of doing it? Right. So I know coach say that a lot as well, too. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't, you, you got to love it. And that, that's, that's what, and that's what anything in life, if you like, a lot of people, that's why a lot of people quit their jobs because they don't love it enough to go through what they have to go through. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, and that's okay. I mean, everybody had a different uh, type of opinion, but I feel like I'll, I'm a also try to raise my kids in that aspect. That's how I try to with my little brother. Uh, I like to tell my mom to put him in as many sports as possible. Like he like right now he likes football and baseball. Um, I told her let him try out soccer, just so he can see how he like and see how good he do get his feet work good like just so he can have fun doing other stuff but yeah that's what's up uh but there's a uh poetry slam coming up um here at finley uh february the 15th wlfc throwing it uh you think you're gonna be able to uh come in there and do a poem uh yeah i don't usually write down like poetry but I think in the moment I'd be able to give a couple of couple lines, couple bars. That'd be tough if you could like do a a poem just like straight out the head. Yeah, that'd be tough. I don't know. I I never seen nobody do that. I always see like people write them and then memorize them. Mm-hmm. Do you have to memorize them, or can you have like a paper up there with you? Uh, because I didn't even think about that. Because I thought about doing one. I mean, if you prepare the piece, but you a little iffy on some points, I think. People are not gonna get mad at you. Okay, you know you can just get you one of those like the music reader stands and yeah. for like band oh, yeah. and stuff. Uh huh. Set that on there and then be just able to read off of these. Yeah. Also, I'm a, I'm a type of person. I'm gonna let people know like this. I don't do this on a regular. So yeah, cut me some slack. Yeah. Um, but like on campus, like, are you involved with anything else on campus? Like, do you do anything outside of football? Yeah, I recently got involved with the Pulse. Um. And trying to be more involved with the TV station. Yeah. Try and do stuff like that. I really feel as if journalism, like being an interviewer, yeah, would be my type of thing. Because I like to ask questions. Right. Get to know people. And I feel as if that would help me with bettering my people skills. Right. Yeah. Being able to talk to people about random things at any given time right. will help me be more in tune with my environment, right. my surroundings, who is, you know, in the same area as me. Right. In a sense. I can see, uh, I can actually see you doing like uh, having a YouTube, uh, doing like public questions. Yeah. Going around uh, campus. But uh, it's kind of hard here. You got to find like the right times where everybody out. Like, yeah. It, but it'd be like weird times, like 12 o'clock. With everybody yeah. between classes or like seven, never on a Friday because you know everybody. Yeah, everyone, everyone's gone right after yeah, class. So yeah, yeah, not on a Friday. Not there, out of there. But yeah, that that'll be uh tough. Like especially on the post, you can come on there and do uh you can do the sideline interviews. Mm-hmm. You can do uh we can actually expand it to other sports other than basketball. Um, cause that's what that was the goal for real. Uh, cause right now me and Jeremiah doing the talking, we need mm-hmm. more people. You know, because the more people, the better. And just to get it it noticed around campus that, oh, you can come do this. And also, because me, personally, I never see, saw myself, like, doing that, like, sideline report or, you know what I'm saying, the stuff like that. But I'm like, 
why not try it? Because I might like it, you know, and it's another opportunity. Like you can you can get opportunities from stuff like that. Like that's why I feel like trying different stuff. Like let's say you wanted to be um, oh, I just want to be a financial advisor. That's all I want to be. That's what I've been wanting to be when I was little. Okay, that's fine and all. But if you dibble and dabble in and some other stuff, why you're why are you going down that path? You might, oh, I actually love this. And this might actually be uh what I want to do, you know what I'm saying? But that's what that's why I start doing that. And I actually start liking it. So I, I feel like you will like it. And your personality real good for that, uh, for that talking and stuff like that. Um that's why uh we really wanted you to talk, uh, be the the uh host at the the uh basketball event that we had. We really wanted to do that, but you play. Yeah. So we have Marcus. Marcus is also good at the uh yeah. hosting. But yeah, that's uh tough, man. Uh to the post. Uh, so like outside of like when you go home, you said you live in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um are you Michigan fan or Ohio State? Because you in Ohio now and I'm gonna stay with Michigan for sure. I feel like it's an obligation at this point. Uh, I've been a fan since, I've been a fan of Michigan for a long time, but I never really watched football. That's the one thing I just couldn't do. I couldn't stand, just sit there and watch football. Uh -oh. I could, I didn't, before maybe like a year and a half, maybe two years ago, I couldn't stand watching football. Like I, I just didn't like watching people do the stuff that I could do. Yeah. You'd rather be playing. Because I'd rather be doing it. Yeah. You know? But so what it like what type of stuff do you watch on your free time free time then? A lot of movies. A Favorite movies. movie. Favorite movie of all time? It's a tie. Between what? Ready Player One. Say it again? Ready Player One. Okay. And the first Jurassic Park. I seen the first Jurassic Park. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. So how how would you compare the first Jurassic Park to the the new ones they're making? Hmm. Compared to Jurassic World, Jurassic Park one and Jurassic World one are real close. But the other ones, I feel like they were doing a little too much. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they really lost the the wow factor that okay. the first one had, that the first yeah. Jurassic Park had. Because when the first Jurassic Park came out, that was yeah, that was a game changer. Because mm -hmm. nobody really ever made nothing like yeah. that before. Being able to have like animatronic dinosaurs walking yeah. around, and you're filming that in a movie. That's that's just insane to do. Yeah. But with all the new stuff that's going on, you can basically create anything and put it on the screen. And so I feel like they were just trying to make like the coolest dinosaur that they could figure out. Yeah. And trying to make it work yeah. in the scheme of things. And I feel like they just maybe like lost a little bit of touch. Right. I feel like a lot of movies be doing that nowadays, mm -hmm. trying to just force stain. But uh, movies, so what type of shows you like there? Like, I like a lot of shows. It's like, it's just tough for me to put a single category in front okay. of people. Yeah. Because of how much, like, how many shows I watch on any given basis. Like, adventure shows, thrillers, dramas, so, rom coms. Yeah. Like, a stuff. A bunch of different, just a yeah, whole. A bunch of variety. Just, yeah, a great big variety of yeah. TV shows and movies. It's, I just really enjoy being able to sit down and watch a good like film or TV show. One that can truly pique my interest. Like right now, I'm watching Last of Us, and Last of Us used to be a video game, and I played through the whole thing. I love the video game. It's mm -hmm. one of the best games I've probably ever played, and they made a TV show adaptation of it. Oh, okay. So uh, watching that, I'm a real big stickler on. If you're gonna put if you're gonna make something based off something else, yeah, it it gotta be right. Be parallel. Yeah. They gotta be seamless. And I just like watching stuff like that because it gives a different perspective. Like the show is giving different background stories right. than the game. But 
it's still good to see that they're doing a good job in portraying the game as a yeah as a show. Yeah, especially when you like the game, you got mm-hmm. it. If it would the if they made it all totally opposite, it would just be like that's how I felt about. Uh, I don't know if you've seen like have you seen Matilda? Yeah. So you seen the regular one, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they put a musical one out. Mm. It was kind of I, I I liked the musical, but it's like it it seemed generic compared to the real one. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I guess you gotta you gotta get used to stuff like that because it's it's the time we in. I feel like they made a. Uh, I feel like it was a great movies made back then. Some yeah, great for movies. sure. Great movies made now too, but it's just like when they make try to make a, a, a movie remake. that was, yeah a remake that was yeah. already good. You know, it's gonna be hard to make it better. Um, do you do like uh, you got any special talents you got like that nobody know about? Um, I do pride myself on being a decent. I'd say above decent freestyle rapper. Um, people already know that, but that's just one of the things that I I just like to do that. Yeah. Anytime, like if you ask me, like, yeah, Red, you want to throw on a beat? We can just have like a rap circle. I'm down for it anytime, you know. But uh, any other talents? I don't really. No, per se. So how do you, so when you freestyling, is it like, when you say a word, does the next one just pop up like that? Like this right there? Or I don't know how that go. I can't freestyle for nothing. Um. So for me, whenever I have my first line, my second line could be directly or indirectly connected to the first one. So it's really about when I listen to a beat, I have to hear the pace of the beat to know what tempo I'm going to be on. Yeah. So it could be, if if I get a quick one, a quick beat, I could do line after line. But if I get like a slower beat where I can actually like tell a story, yeah, I would put a line, then like a filler, then the next line, and then it'll it'll be very so you cohesive. Thinking, so you thinking of that? All right there and then. Yeah. Like as soon the as the beat come on, boom. All right, this is how I'm gonna do it. Once I get a once I get a feel for the beat in the first like couple, like first like 10, 20 seconds, then I can go from there. I'll probably throw out a bar at first just to get like basically like putting your feet in the water. Yeah. You know, you yeah. want to see how cold the water is. Right. So you just dip your feet in there. Before and then once you, you jump know, in. Once you know, then you you straight swimming. So do could you freestyle without a beat? Or is it um, harder? Is that just harder? Because now it's feel like you're just talking or something. I'm pretty good at freestyle without a beat, but uh, you prefer with the beat. Yeah, I would prefer with a beat. Yeah, for sure. Because some, I feel like sometimes bars hit a little harder with the beat. With a beat. Yeah. So say you get a beat, and then your beat cut off towards the middle. Like that's a part of the beat where it just goes silent. Yeah. And then you still you still rap and you still spin. And then when the beat comes back, you pick up yeah. the pace of your rhymes right. right as the beat drop. I feel like that's just Yeah, that is tough. That's that's something that's actually amazing. All right. You freestyle. So to me, you got some music taste. Who is your favorite artist? Let's go, favorite artist. Your favorite song. And let's do, matter of fact, let's do your favorite song out right now and your favorite artist out right now. <sighs> favorite song out right now. Hmm. Cause you know everybody rocking with that, uh, that little Uzi song right now. Oh, uh, I just want to rock. Yeah, yeah. See, we ain't saying nothing for real, yeah. but it's just so hard, like the beat. Yeah, and all it's that. just. I feel like that song is just catchy. Yeah, I feel like people like the song more for the dance, yeah. not than the song. Uh-huh. Uh, but favorite song out right now, I'll probably say like newer ish or like yeah, general. like newer like just drop. Or if you, if you can't think of one that's just like that, just, not just drop, but like recent, you can 
favorite song ever. Okay. Uh, let's see. Favorite song. Favorite song of all time. Any song, if I could pick it and just play it, is Mind Playing Tricks on Me by Ghetto Boys. Okay. My dad put me onto that. And it's literally one of my favorite songs. I gotta try it out one time. Ever created. I got I got a list of that. Um what type of uh, song is it like? What uh genre of music? 90s rap. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 90s rap for sure. Is that something I should know? It's iffy, it depends. Okay. Okay. It depends on like what type of 90 90s rap you listen to. I like 90s rap because yeah. like I always tell my mom because in the 90s she was what probably high in high school her high school time I always mm -hmm. tell her like I'm like y'all y'all music was better like because at parties they parties to be hype like you watch yeah. house party yeah. and all that they dancing the whole time like we yeah. that that look hype we ain't dancing we rapping yeah saying we rapping or jumping around at the most people ain't in there really just yeah. getting it the whole time to every song that's tough to me actually. I watched House Party like so many times, but that's a good movie. Like, is it anything like else that you're doing that you want to like shout out or like want people to tune in? Because, like you said, you already said the TikTok. Um, you got the YouTube coming out. Um, is there anything else that you got in the works that you want to let the people know about? Um. Another thing I've been thinking about doing is like setting up like a motivational speaking platform. Mm -hmm. You can go far with that. Yeah, for sure. Cause you know how many people need that. Yeah. Cause a lot of like, cause that can actually get you through some stuff. Like, yeah. Even though like you can't, you're supposed to have internal motivation, but just hearing the like they even played up the motivational. With uh videos and stuff before football games or stuff yeah. like that, like that really could get somebody pumped up. So it's like you doing are you gonna do the one that's like sport specific pump up or like a life one? Like you I got this do, this type or like what you thinking? I I think I would do a life one, a life one because in sports sometimes your adversary is ad, adversity is temporary, right? But in life sometimes that adversity that you go through can stick around and fester and be there and just continue to be there. And you feel as if you can't escape. Right. And when you put yourself in that, that mind state that you can't escape, that's when like that, that feeling that you are stuck really starts to set in and you feel like you can't, no matter what you do, your efforts are pointless because you're not, achieving the things that you want when you may just be trying to achieve too much in too little time or you may need to think about what you're doing from a different angle from a different perspective man yeah. stuff like that is what i think people need to hear more than just me only putting my motivation towards sports All right yeah i want i want people to be able to live better happy lives.